Hello everybody. I hope this finds you well. Um, I'm making this video uh, on the uh, Occupy Wall Street, Occupy the World thing going on. I'll give you my two cents. Um, when I first seen it coming out, seen these things just emerge, as it will, out of the, the the vapor, you might say, the ether of the internet. And these people go out there and start protesting against the corporate takeover of our world, and, uh, against the Federal Reserve, the fractal banking system, and I was going, yeah, all right, it's that's good. I see them keeping peaceful keeping peaceful and uh, then the cops abusing them trying to start trouble and I was glad to see the protesters stay peaceful that, that was good I started to think this may be a good thing I was noticing it wasn't getting attention in the press that made me think it was probably a good thing also because the press is working for that one percent And I start seeing things that I find troubling, but this is expected with any kind of movement that it comes from the people itself. I um, started seeing uh, the normal infiltration going on. started seeing people like Michael Moore showing up and turning it into some kind of socialist movement. Capitalism isn't the problem. The little old ladies at the got the quilting club making the little quilts have some cash set around. One of them's got a nephew on the garage downtown. They all decide, well, let's all pitch in together, invest in our nephew's garage downtown. They all do that. Well, that makes them old ladies capitalists. And that garage downtown, getting that investment money, is able to expand his garage and hire more help and do more work. And becomes a good, profitable business. And the little old ladies share in that profit. That's not the problem. Capitalism is not the problem. That is capitalism. That is capitalism in a free market society. Now there's a different kind of capitalism. And Michael Moore knows it well. He uses it. He sells his books using it. Corporatism. Corporatism is not a free market. They squeeze out the little guy. They don't produce products made to last that are good. They make products that will sell a lot of and they'll fall apart so you have to buy more of them later. They're in it for the dollar. They'll bribe officials and government to get laws made because they have a bigger power, a power given to them by a piece of paper that they gave life to. That piece of paper now can sue you without any one person being the sewer. That one person is that piece of paper that says corporation on it. It's no wonder we live in such a screwed up society when you got a culture that makes a piece of paper a living entity. No one person to blame 
no one person to sue, no one person to fail, just a piece of paper. And the people that own that piece of paper reap the benefits. I don't know. I have mixed feelings about the movement. I think we should first occupy our own minds before we try to occupy the rest of the world. We each have rights that God gave us. And I'm all for standing up for them. But God did not give a piece of paper any rights at all. It's just a piece of paper with a bunch of writing on it and some names and numbers. What is true wealth? The love of money is the root of all evil. But the, the number one, one percent people, those people up there in that one percent, money is power. And they control the money, so they control the power. And you can't touch them because they hide behind a piece of paper. You know, uh, the Federal Reserve is a private bank owned by private interests. To get the money printed by the Federal Bank, the Federal Reserve, the central bank that they is a unconstitutional system. What do you think the U.S. uses for collateral? You. We are the collateral for the money that is printed by the Federal Reserve. Where does the Federal Reserve or what would be the question does the Federal Reserve use to back up the money they print? What assets do they have that we have to borrow from them other than paper? It's just paper, people. Fancy paper, I grant you that. It's illegal for you to make it because you have nothing to back it up with. And if you did, it would still be illegal because you're the only ones that can do it. And what do they back their money with that, they, that we borrow from them? Nothing. It's nothing. The only reason money still has any value is because people let it. As long as that piece of paper will buy you something at the store, it will have that value until the store no longer accepts them. What happens then? What do you buy your groceries with? Now, the store doesn't actually transfer or give money to anybody when they buy their things. It is an automatic transfer in numbers in a bank somewhere.
so they actually get the stuff that they sell us with numbers in a bank somewhere. That piece of paper is pretty damn powerful, ain't it? It's just a piece of paper. It's not a person. And you're not a piece of paper either, though that's what they recognize you as. That's funny too, isn't it? Mixed feelings, indeed. It would be nice to see the Tea Party people that uh, were genuine in what their concerns were, which were subverted, would join with the Occupy people before all of their movement is subverted and show that it is a movement of the people, not of political parties, left or right. It's not about left or right, it's about the freedom of the people. It's about the republic. We don't live in a democracy, people. We live in a republic. The only form of government man has that protects your rights as individuals. A democracy is three wolves and one sheep voting what's for dinner. Better to have one tyrant than a thousand. public doesn't regulate your ass out of the window into debt or out of a job. Regulations that don't apply to corporations because they're pieces of paper. It's hard not to get upset about these things, isn't it? Do not become the brute to defeat the brute. Keep it peaceful. True wealth look, look at the link below. Peace, love, and understanding to you all.